Good morning, good morning. It is cold. What is going on? It is June. It's June 5th. Thank you so much for coming. Come on in. Let's have a chat, you and I. I'm so excited to see you today. I'm excited for today. Great things are happening today. God is amazing. God is awesome. He's doing tremendous things in this season and I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me. I'm excited about story time. Story time is just amazing. I love, 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 love story time. Thank you so much for coming on, Larry. Good to see you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. I just love the stuff that God is doing. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, Marianne, good to see you. Hey, Aaron, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. This story today is just going to bless you. I'm excited already about it. Thank you so much for being here, guys. You know what to do, right? Go to the bottom of the screen and share the broadcast. Hey, Charlene, good to see you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Hey, um, say... Sokita, Sokita, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. So glad that you are here. Make sure that I mute this. And I share. So I'm just going to go ahead and share. Once you share the broadcast, do me a favor and type hashtag shared so I know you did it. Is that, is that easy enough for you guys to do? That would be awesome, okay? Because story time, people are getting used to it. It's back. Good morning. Good to see you, my brother. God bless you. Uh, it's back. People are excited about it. I'm excited about Hey, Sandra. Good to see you. Good morning. So I'm just saying hello to people and don't forget to react to the broadcast something um blesses your soul um uh, just tap on the screen if you feel led to share with other people share with other people if i'm if i'm driving all over your your street tap on the screen thank you so much for sharing i appreciate that aaron thank you so much hey sandra thank you so much for being here just go to the bottom of the screen and click share and share the broadcast that's all you have to do seriously that's all you have to do i'm so excited in case you don't know who i am i am adding new people to my friends list all the time i don't know where they're coming from but i'm thankful so if you don't know who i am my name is Catherine story you might know that because you're watching this but you may not know why i do story time and why i show up Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time to share uh, a story and then pair it with some teaching that has principle, um, Christian principles, Bible-based principles. And the reason why is because God told me to, because he called me to do this, because it's my calling and it's my passion. It is what I was created to do. Uh, I have my own business. I am a writing coach and a storyteller. And as you can tell, I love st telling stories. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. And it is amazing, literally amazing, when when you realize that you can live your life on purpose and that you don't have to do it by yourself. If you did not watch yesterday's broadcast, I don't know where you were. You got to watch it because yesterday was powerful. It was amazing. Oh my God, it was so super duper awesome awesome it was like oh my god he blessed me okay so i'm telling you because he blessed me just know hey alicia hey harlan hey marianne good to see you thank you so much for being here um do me a favor guys and make sure that you share the broadcast hey denise thank you for being here i'm excited you all let me know if you're ready for story time kiki's here hello um did i see my sister um why do i always have it um rustling i don't know why my her name escapes me also most of the time i do not know why but i don't think she's here yet she'll be here any minute let me know if you're ready for story time let me know just just tap on the screen let me see some hearts going up that will let me know that you're ready for story time and we can get started oh my god god is awesome did you did you get the memo that god is awesome i don't know if you knew that but god is awesome he's amazing and he's crazy in love with you like crazy in love with you like seriously he is bananas about you like bananas 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 like he thinks you're the best thing that ever happened that's what he thinks okay he thinks he's amazing Harley says yes she knows that he's awesome and he loves us and she's ready all right so story time so this is a, bit, a little bit unusual but i'm just gonna go with what god told me to do so i'm gonna do that okay so this morning i don't know if you guys knew but i've been reading the bible um, I started with the New Testament. That was the fun part. Got through that. And now I'm making my way through the Old Testament, okay? I am so excited about that. Hey, Aisha, good to see you. So I'm reading the Bible. I have a brand new Bible that I love. It's fancy pants. It's leather with the shiny uh, pages. And it's beautiful, right? I'm writing all over that thing. That's what the Bible is supposed to do. It's supposed to be used, by the way. So I'm, in, I'm up to Jeremiah, okay? I made it all the way. I'm up to Jeremiah. I only have 276 pages. Pages left to go. 
Woohoo! Not that I'm gonna stop reading my Bible after I go through it, but it is my intent to read the whole thing cover to cover, not just jumping from here into there. Somebody type for me 276. 276, 276, type that for me. I am 276 pages away from reading the Bible cover to cover, okay, for the first time. I'm, I'm up to Jeremiah, and I think I'm, Jer I'm to Jeremiah 13. And earlier in the week, maybe like, maybe last week, maybe Thursday, I was feeling like, awesome, thank you guys, thank you. I was feeling like I needed, so I needed, I needed a shift. Hey, Karen, good to see you. I'm just starting with story time, perfect timing. Um, I needed a little shift, and I kind of asked him for permission. Is it okay if I jump around? Is it okay if I go to another book? I feel like you're calling me to another book in this season, okay? And that's how I feel. I have liberty to read the Bible however I want, but I decided to ask the one that made it. I decided to ask him, is it okay? Is it okay if I, if I jump around and go to another book? And will you tell me what that book is? I knew I needed to go to another book. I just didn't know which book. Have you ever been there? Type me. If you've ever been reading the Bible, you just don't know where you're supposed to go, but you know you're supposed to be reading something. Hello, Sandra. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I appreciate it for letting me know that it's Sandra. Thank you for watching. So I'm reading the Bible, okay? And I'm asking God, where do you want me to go? I feel like Jeremiah is good. He's my boy. I like him. I appreciate him. I think he's amazing. Aaron Spin is with me. Uh, Charlene is with me. Sokita is with me. You need a Bible? I can get you a Bible. Let me see if I can get you one from my church on Sunday, Karen, okay? I'm going to get you a Bible, all right? So anyway, so ask and you shall receive. I'm reading my Bible and I ask God, Denise, where should I be? Where should I be? Don't worry, Karen. God loves you. He was Jewish after all. So you're in good company. I am always, I always call myself Jewish adjacent. Like, in a, in, if I believe in other lives, which I don't, but if I believe in other lives, I will be like, I would like to be Jewish when I come back. Not that I believe in that, but that's how much I care about my Jewish friends and my family. So just FYI, you are in great company right here. I, isn't she, guys? Don't we love Karen, especially because she's Jewish? Not, be, not in spite of being Jewish but because she is. We love her tremendously. Anyway, give her some love in the chat if you don't mind. I asked God, where should I read? And then I felt in my spirit that he said, go to Ephesians. I love Ephesians. Who loves Ephesians? I think Ephesians is amazing. I think Ephesians is the bomb.com. I love me some Ephesians. Thank you for tapping the screen. I really appreciate that. If you haven't shared the broadcast, go ahead and share the broadcast. So I got excited because I love Ephesians, Sandra. I love, love, love Ephesians. Okay. Love me some Ephesians. Okay. So I'm excited, but you know what, like when you're reading something for the first time now, when I read Ephesians, I did not read it from the new version that I, the new Bible that I have, and certainly not the Amplify version. So it almost feels like it's a brand new book for me, even though I read it many times, I've studied it many times. I don't know if you ever done that, but I would recommend, highly recommend that you read the Bible in different versions. Especially when you read something and you don't really get it, go to the Amplify. And if you still don't get it, go to the message. The message will hook you up, okay? That's my tip for you. It's free. You don't even have to pay for that one. If you get stuck with the Bible um, and you don't get it, uh, go to the Amplify. And if you don't get it still, go to the message. It's the plainest language and it's clear. It just goes in. It goes in. So I'm excited. I start and then I get today to Ephesians 3. And I don't know why I did not think about Ephesians 3. I'm just thinking I'm reading a new book. I have a new mindset. It's a new version. And I don't know what's coming. You know, Ephesians is powerful. Ephesians will have you shouting in the middle of a marketplace. Ephesians will have you shouting even if you're depressed. Even if you cannot, even if you can barely move, Ephesians 3 will have you shouting. Let me know if you haven't been in that place that you read Ephesians 3 and tears go down your face. You start doing a praise uh, jig in the middle of wherever you are. That is how powerful Ephesians 3 is. Let me know if I'm the only one. Tap on the screen if you have ever read 
Ephesians 3 and fell loved up. Like your cup goes from empty to all the way to overflow. That's what happens when I read the book of Ephesians. I don't know about you, but that's what happens to me when I read it. But for some reason this morning, I was brand new. For some reason this morning, I forgot that the that verse 19 and 20 was coming. I forgot about that, okay? Just, just forget it. I forgot about it. Hey, Sandra, thank you so much for sharing. So I'm reading it and Paul is Paul, the apostle Paul wrote this letter. Okay. It's a letter. It's a book in the Bible, but it's really a letter to the church of Ephesus. Okay. That's why it's called Ephesians because people from Ephesus are Ephesians. Like people from America are American. Does that make sense? I, I don't want to get too deep and get too philosophical here. Okay. But it is a letter written by the apostle Paul to the Ephesus. Um, and they're called Ephesians, which is why the book is called Ephesians. You got it? Let me know if that makes sense. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. I don't want to lose you, if, especially if you're a newbie, because I want you to get this message. I need you to get this message. Anyway, Paul is writing this book, and he's talking about his story. And I love Paul. I think Paul is one of my favorites because he never tried to hide who he used to be. That will preach right there. Paul was a believer, and he never tried to hide who he was. He never did. He always actually went out of his way to remind how grateful he was to the fact that God chose to call him even though of his past. Okay? Are you with me? Good to see you, Karen. Watch the replay, okay? Watch the replay. So listen, Paul never forgot who he used to be. And now in his, in his past life, Paul used to be Saul. And he used to chase Christians. He used to persecute Christians. Christians because he was so religious. He was so religious that he thought he was doing the right thing by persecuting Christians because he thought there were no real Christians. He thought there were no real followers of God. And he was a big follower of God, but he did not know that he was chasing his people. So let me go back to the story. I'm reading, I'm reading Ephesians 3 and I love how <clears throat> Paul is speaking and I just love it so much. I love, love this so much where he says, um, let me find it for you because that really, really spoke to me. Because he never forget where he came from. He never forgot where he came from. He says, I am the prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of Jew Gentiles. That's you and me. We're Gentiles because we're not of Jewish descent, unfortunately. But that's okay. We, know all, we don't all have to be perfect, right? Um, hold on one second. Okay, verse 8. He's talking. He's excited. He knows this mystery. It was made known to him. And then he says on verse 8, To me, though I am the very least of all the saints. Oh my God. Are you with me? Do you ever feel like the very least? This is the Apostle Paul, okay? He had amazing missionary trips. Thousands of people, upon thousands of people, became Christians and believers because of Paul. He performed miracles and wonders, and he's saying in Ephesians 3.20 that even to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, are you with me? Even though I am the very least, he never forgets, and he always talks about what he used to do. He always says, I don't deserve this grace. I don't even deserve to be called a Christian, even an apostle, but he called me. I'm doing it. And he said it over and over again. If you have not read the, the book of Ephesians and, and Philippians, go ahead and read that thing. It will bless your whole entire life. Why am I telling you this? And why did that thing jump at me so much? I read this many times before. I promise you, I did not see this. I did not see this before. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, he talked about over and over again. He talked about how he did not deserve. He did not deserve to be called a saint, but he still was. That got me thinking. Okay, so Paul is who he is now. He's pretty popular, doing amazing exploits for the kingdom. And he's not afraid to tell people about his shortcomings. Okay, he's popular, he's famous, he's got a position in the church. 
and he's still not afraid to tell other believers and especially non-believers who he used to be. He was not afraid to tell other people where he used to be, what issues, what things he did that he should have never done, how he actually persecuted. He was actually in the stoning of Stephen. Do you know that? That he was a youth and he grabbed the clothes of Stephen when Stephen was was um, was murdered by stoning. He was stoned to death and, and, and Paul was there. He was in the presence when that happened. Just think about how he's, his mind worked. But he still, whenever he was ammunition people, whenever he had to correct people, he always told them, listen, listen, I'm not even supposed to be doing this, but by the grace of God, I am. By the grace of God, I am. Are you with me today? There are some things that God has in store for you in spite of where you have been. In spite of where you have been. Who else feels inadequate? Just type me. Who else feels like, I don't deserve all this grace. I don't deserve to be called the daughter of the son of the most high. I just don't deserve it. Let me know if you ever feel that way. Let me know if you feel, you know what? I'm going to stay here all dignified. I'm going to stay here quiet. I'm not going to tell my business. I'm not going to tell anybody what I used to be. I'm not going to tell people that I'm divorced. You know, that happened to me, okay? And I did not want to tell people. I, I wanted to just keep it to myself, you not know, knowing that I was holding on to somebody else's deliverance. Not knowing that by me telling my testimony and telling people that God can still use you after divorce, that God has still has a plan for you, even though that happened, even though I made life choices that were less than perfect, God still chooses to use me today. Are you with me? Are you with me? Don't hide where you have been. They are amazing people that I follow, that I love, that I listen to. And my favorite part about them is their brokenness. There are people that I love and follow. And my favorite part that I love about them is their brokenness. And do you know why I love their brokenness, the former brokenness, not the current one, the former brokenness, because it lets me know that God is still at work, Lisa. Good to see you. God bless you. God is still in the sanctification business. God is still in the life changing business. So when these people that have a, have a great position, that have great influence, that God is sending them all around the world to preach and to share the gospel, listen and they share where they struggle. They share where they used to be. They share what God has done in their life. He blesses me. It's not because I'm happy they went through, through that, but it reminds me. It's a reminder like Paul did to me this morning. It is a reminder that I don't have to be perfect because Christ was perfect for me already. He reminds me that, that, uh, that the law is fulfilling Christ. So I don't have to worry about it because I am going to fail. It is a done deal. He already knows that. That's why he sent the only perfect blameless lamb to die on the cross for me. Do you understand that? I don't have to be ashamed of my, of my story because it is nailed to the cross with Christ. It was nailed to the cross with Christ. I don't have to worry about that story anymore. I have been redeemed. I am made new. It doesn't matter anymore. It's already paid for, completely paid for. Why do we forget that? We think that we have to continue to hold on to what we used to do and God and ask God for forgiveness over and over again when the Bible says that he has taken all our, our sins and he has put them to the bottom of the sea and he will not remember them anymore. Are you with me? So I don't know what you're going through. I really don't know, but I can tell you that God is in control. I can tell you that he is amazing. He is awesome. He is calling you to do great things. He's calling you to do great things. He's calling you to reach out to other Gentiles, to people that need where you are, what you have. There's something that I have that other people need. I have Jesus in my life. This morning, I'm reading the Bible, and I'm blown away, and I'm thanking God for Paul. Paul has been dead for a very, very, very long time, and I still thank God for his life. I still thank God for the mistakes that he made because he gives me hope. It reminds me that God is in control. 
It reminds me that I am part of the family. It reminds me that I am an heir, a co-heir with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And then I love how Paul always closes his his um, his letters with a motivational speech. He he was a motivator. He was an encourager. And I don't know who needs this today, but I need to read this today because it is powerful. Okay, it's it's Ephesians three sixteen. Can somebody read that for me? I will really really appreciate. I have ten minutes left. I got to get this going before I leave. But I I, I wanna I wanna decree and declare this over your life. I wanna let you know that this is for you too. Let me know when you're ready. Ephesians three sixteen, the Amplified version. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory. That will preach right there. Out of the riches of his glory, he has all the glories. He's got all the riches. So that means a lot. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self. You know what that means, inner self? The Amplified, the Amplified Bible says indwelling your inner innermost being and personality the deepest part of you is gonna be deeply blessed it's gonna be deeply enriched by the glory and the power of christ so that christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith you know what dwell is it stay for a long time may he dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in his love I don't know if you're shouting over there. I feel like running over here. May you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in his love. Did you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That nothing can separate you. The Bible says that nothing, no one can take them from his fingers, from his hands. The Father has put us in Jesus Christ's hands. And he says that nothing or, or anything can take them away from me. We are deeply rooted. You're not going to lose your salvation. You're not going to lose your spot. Your name is on the book of life. Your name is deeply rooted in the person of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. I don't know about you, but that lets me know that when yesterday, when I asked for a double portion, that I'm going to get it because the apostle Paul says that may he grant you out of the riches of his glory and to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self. That's what he says right there. So you don't have to worry about telling your story. You don't have to worry about what people are going to say. People are going to talk. They've been talking. They've been talking about Jesus. They've been talking about Jesus and he's been dead for a long time, but he resurrected again, but he was on earth a very long time ago and people are still talking about him. If you are going to let people talking about your past, where you have been, what you have done, you're going to be um, stopped for a very long time. Even, if, even when you don't know, people are talking about you. Even when you don't know, people are still talking about you. You cannot let that stop you. You just can. Verse 18, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width, the length, and the height, and the depth of his love. I don't think you heard that. So you can fully comprehend the width, the length, the height, and the depth of his love. Did you hear me? Which means that it has to be fully experiencing the amazing endless love. The depth, the width, and the height. You know that God has no beginning and no end. You know that, right? He has no beginning and no end. So if he has no beginning and no end, and he loves you, as big as he is, as tall as he is, as deep as he is, as wide as he is. How much love is that? Can you quantify that? Because I, I don't know that you're hearing this. That if he loves you as much as big as he is, the depth, the, the, the width and the height of how much he loves us. And he has no beginning and no end. That's how love you are. So you thinking that your love tank is empty is because you're not looking at the right place. If your love tank is empty, and I'm not, I'm not judging you, my love tank has been empty before, and that's when, when, that's when my eyes were not focused on him. That's when I thought my love tank was empty. But when I understand the width, the length, the height, and the depth of his love, fully experiencing the amazing endless love, and that you may come to know 
and that you may come to know practically through personal experience. That's what I want to I spend one minute in here. Through practically, through personal experience. You cannot love someone if you don't know them. You can be infatuated with them. You can be in like with them. But if you don't spend quality time with that person, you cannot love them because you don't know them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You think you love somebody, but until you spend time with them and you know them through personal experience, then you know them, then you can really love them. So it says that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge. This is what this is what got me. This is what got me teary eyed and excited this morning. The love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge because knowledge this says here is without experience without experience you can know something but until you know it that you lived it that you've been in it you have to experience it you have to you have to go beyond knowing about jesus you have to really know him you have to know the person that he is you have to know the love of him for you that you, and why do you need to do this? Did you ask that? Are you asking me that question, Catherine? Why are you so passionate about Jesus? Why are you so passionate about the Father? Let me tell you why. That you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God. That you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God. Do you understand that? Do you understand what that means? So that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. I don't know what you're filled up with. I have no idea, but I got to tell you that you got to empty yourself of all that junk. You need to do some spring cleaning today. And be filled and flooded with God himself. That All that junk is messing you up anyway. All that junk is making you sick anyway. You need to be filled and flooded with God himself. That when people cut you off, when, when, they, when they try to mess with you, you, they see Jesus. They see God. That's what you need. That's why you need to have that experience with him. That's why it's okay to share your story. Because when your story is wrapped up in Christ, you are a new creation. When you're story is wrapped up in Christ, you can bless other people. When your story is wrapped up in the person who is Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. You have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. Are you with me? And then he wraps up. He wraps up with a purple bow. He wraps it up with diamonds and, and a sprinkle, whatever else yumminess you can think of. Now to him who is able to carry out his purposes and do super abundantly more than all that we dare to ask or think. What does that mean? Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. According to his power that is our work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and forever. Amen. This is the family that you have joined up when you ask Jesus to come into your heart. This is your inheritance. This is what's waiting for you. This is the kind of father that you have, that he's able to carry out his purpose, do super abundantly more, type that please, super abundantly more, more than we dare ask or think. Did you hear that? More than we dare ask or think. What does that mean? Because we think we're less than. Because we don't see ourselves through the eyes of Jesus Christ. We think we deserve less than. We think that a little bit is enough. We think that uh, him giving us salvation is enough. And that's way more than we deserve. Which is true. But remember that he gives us according to his riches. Not according to what we have done. No according to who we are. He gives us exceedingly and abundantly be or beyond what we dare ask or think. 
beyond what we dare ask or think. Beyond what we dare ask or so yesterday when this lady right here asked for a double portion, that's what I dared to ask. That, that was the only thing I can think of. He's gonna give me above and beyond. I don't know what you asked about yesterday. You have to go watch that yesterday. My brother Aaron, I don't know what I feel this, but you have to watch yesterday's broadcast. You got to ask whatever you dare ask or think, God's going to do super abundantly more. Super abundantly more. According to his power. According to his power. According to his power, what are you daring to ask? And then when you ask that big thing that you think is too much, he does it above and beyond. This is what I love him. When he pushes us outside of our comfort zone, then he says, don't worry. Because now I'm gonna supersize this thing up. Now I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in a Jesus way. I'm gonna supersize that thing in your life. Tell your story. It's all wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. It's okay to tell your story. There is power in your story because when you tell them where you used to be and they see that you that you are now, they're gonna say that's not possible. I don't believe you. There's no way that you're going to be who you are today when you told me all the things that you did before. And you say, you point back to Jesus and you say, it was not me. It was not me. It was not religion. It was not the world. It was Jesus. And let me tell you this. It's not only, it is not only for me. It is for you also. Mm, mm, mm. It is for you also. When I tell you, when I tell you that you have to see yourself as Jesus sees you, you're not going to care so much about telling your story. You're not going to care so much about what people are going to say because you are hidden in the presence of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that these words are true and that they are for you today, that you have come into this broadcast for such a time as this, that you needed this today. And I believe that his word never comes back void never comes back void. Remember to ask for a double portion, ask for a quadruple portion, believing that he's able and willing and ready to do it. My goodness, God Almighty, this was good. God is amazing. He takes over all of the time. I don't take the credit. The Holy Spirit did it. The Holy Spirit always does it. Have an amazing day. Know that I love you. Watch it again if you have to. Share this with somebody that is down today. If somebody complains to you today, send in this broadcast. Just send, no, don't even say anything. Thing, just send it to them 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 and you watch how their whole demeanor how their whole life changes my name is Catherine story I'm here Monday through Friday 10 30 a.m. Eastern time bringing you story time God bless you have a blessed day know that I love you and I cannot wait I cannot wait to hear your testimony. They give it to me, type it in on this broadcast, and I'm telling you that, that many are going to be um, blessed by your own deliverance. God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much, guys. I love you. Thank you, Karen, Karina. Hey, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you so much.